Yeah, I got a question. Uh, what the hell were Andy and Sabrina? Well, Andy specifically. What was there to be proud of <laughs> in terms of how Karen conducted herself over at Zack and Fatima's? Like, you know, when she um, found out about the engagement and whatnot. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I feel and look. This is just my interpretation. I've rewatched the episode because I gave the episode a negative three out of ten. And while I don't regret the number, I did think, man, was that a bit too hard? I, I didn't, again, I didn't regret, but I did think about it. I'm like, eh, let me watch it again. And I still feel the same way, negative three out of ten. I feel like Andy saying this was kind of a mixture of doing what these characters always do. Trying to spare Karen her feelings for whatever reason. Okay? And on top of that, she was trying to calm her down because Karen was, you know, barking at her like a dog in terms of, you didn't tell me they were engaged and I look like a fool and you didn't look like a fool. You handle it. Not really. I don't think she did. I think Karen was just her usually pissy self. And thankfully, Fatima called her out for it or, you know, throwing shade and whatnot. Karen handling it means she handled it like a mature adult. There are times I have to remind myself she is 36 years old. And she certainly doesn't act like it. I think I, it was last week when I thought about it in terms of why won't she let Zach go and leave him be? And I'm like, well... It, when you, it's never too late to change, but let's be honest here. Once you get to a certain age, you're kind of stuck in your ways. And I guess because of the fact that she's 36, she's already in the, you know, the age of where pregnancies are more complicated for her age group. So this is kind of like her last chance to have a baby that, she, well, you know, well, not her last chance, but you know what I mean? Before she reaches a certain age where it's like, okay, this is just too much right now. I think that because she spent so much time with Zach, she burned up kind of like, you know, the last few years on her clock, so to speak. And that's why she's so mad because he's moved on, even though she moved on before him. So she's kind of stuck in her ways of what kind of man she actually wants. This is me trying to give some grace to Karen to understand her. But her behavior and whatnot just doesn't make sense. And the whole blaming on the pregnancy, I think, is complete utter nonsense. No, that I know that pregnancy does influence hormones and emotions. But Karen has always been like this. You can argue that um, the pregnancy heightens her emotions. Hey, anime comparison, Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta was an egotistical maniac. And once he became a Super Saiyan, that got dialed up from the 12 it was at pretty much to a 17. So basically, he was full of himself, even when he got his ass beat multiple times. But it the, the Super Saiyan transformation just brought out more of who he really was. I feel like the same thing is happening with Karen with this pregnancy in terms of her emotions. Which, yet again, I have no flipping idea how the hell she's going to make it the remaining 8 months or so. Because of the way she's constantly putting herself in these stressful situations, blowing up on everybody. I think when it boils down to it, Andy, like I said, was trying to kind of save face by, hey, hey, don't be mad at me. You handled it well. You handled it well. And trying to like coddle Karen about the situation. But no, I mean, when Karen said like, a, you made me look like a fool and I'm like, no, you did that to yourself. You're the one who's constantly throwing shade rolling your eyes, giving people attitude, the way you went over there and touched that engagement ring when it wasn't yours and every, th There was nothing about that that had me going, Karen conducted herself cool. Now, people argue that, well, Jeremy, I think that in terms of this situation, Karen handled it better than usual. I, I will somewhat agree with that, but isn't that kind of a outlier of, damn, what we saw at the beginning of this episode was a calm Karen. That's bad when you really think about it. It's like this is the bar is set so low that her not cussing everyone out and throwing shit around is Karen on a good day. I think what makes this as frustrating as it is is the fact that we aren't even a hundred. Well, not even a hundred percent, but we're not show sure at all if she's lying about the dates or not. 
the fact that, you know, this, all this attitude, all this rage, all this, I want to get more child support. All of this is stemmed from a lie. And I feel like that's going to make all this a waste of time. It really is. I don't even care about Karen's comeuppance anymore. It's like, oh, it turns out it's not Zach's baby. Oh, whoop de doo It's not worth it seeing the look on her face when she realizes because she already knows it's not his baby. It's the fact that it doesn't... Karen's moment of comeuppance doesn't equate to all the pain and animosity and hurt she's put towards Zach and Fatima over the past few seasons. Hell, the only reason, the only way I can see this being hilarious, if it, if it, if it turns out Aaron isn't who he says he is, he has another woman. We know there's a character, Jennifer, who we're going to have to, you know, encounter in a few episodes here, but I don't know. It's, it, yeah, I think if every, if Zach and Aaron both went to the doctor or if Karen was upfront about the dates and we knew without a shadow of a doubt that Zach was the father, I would feel differently about this. But the fact that we're just having to endure week after week after week of Karen going off on everyone over her own decision, I'm not even going to say mistake. Her giving up Zach for Aaron, I, I don't blame her. He was trash. But it was her choice. Now she's mad because he's been making better decisions without her. Like I said, love Ebony Obsidian. Acting chops are there. I really do love emotional moments. But the character of Karen, I cannot stand. What the hell are we proud of here? That's like, for example, if you have a kid in school who always gets into fights. You know, he's a bully. He beats up people. You know, let's say he gets into like five different altercations in a week. And then the next week, he only got into four. Hey, I'm proud of you. Okay, yeah, that is an improvement. But at the same time, you still beat up four people or got into four different fights. Karen is the same way. Hey, I'm proud of you. Yeah, you didn't cuss anybody out, Karen, but you did throw a lot of shade and, you know, you pretty much, you know, blew up a meeting that was supposed to be Zach being mature because you got in your feelings. No, there's nothing to be proud of. And the worst part was when, you know, she talked about child support and Andy rightfully said, you said you didn't want that. And it's not just that she didn't want the $3,000, but she pretty much made it clear she wants nothing from Zach. But now it's like, oh, we can get more than that because it's based on income. I'm really proud of you, Karen. Sabrina, who asked you shit? You should be riding away in the jail cell right now. Be quiet. You don't know what's going on. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the snipe at Sabrina, but I did not like her in this episode. All right. Well, that's all I got. I don't want to. There's nothing to be proud. Andy, look, I think Andy has a problem, which we all know. She holds on to relationships and friends she doesn't need to. It's the fact that she's been involved with Karen so long as a friend, she doesn't want to let her go. But to be honest, I think that Andy needs to let her go. In some ways, kind of like with Zach, the way that Karen emotionally and verbally beat him into the ground from becoming the man that he is today. I think the same thing can be said of Andy where Karen has been so much of a big sister, even though I think she's the shortest out of the group, which makes her fun size. Honestly, I'm sorry. I'm getting off track. Um, I just feel like she's been so, she's been such a dominating figure in the dynamic of her friendship that Andy hasn't been able to grow. Oh, it's kind of like, you know, if they were two plants in the ground together, Karen would be the one absorbing all of the sunlight and nutrients. So she would be the bigger plant blocking out the growth that Andy should be capable of as well. It's like she barely feeds Andy a bit of the water and nutrients that she gets all to herself, keeping Andy in the shadows and unable to grow and blossom into her own self. So I think that Andy dump, well, not dumping, but Andy cutting Karen out of her life could honestly be one of the best things for her. I think if Andy didn't have the support system of the sisters, she would actually be a better person for it. Would she still make dumbass decisions? Yes, but I think when she falls on her ass and she doesn't have that support system, she will finally realize, hey, I'm a grown ass woman. I need to make smarter decisions, not Every situation I end up in, I'm going to have people to pick me up. So instead of dealing with abusers and manipulators, 
I need to deal with real men. So I think, in my personal opinion, Andy is better off about Karen. And also, with the whole Gary thing, same thing applies. She should let go of Gary because, like Karen, he's a domineering force, a manipulator. Guilt trips her into everything, even when he's the one in the wrong. She's better off, in my personal opinion. Like I said again, I think Andy doesn't need Gary. She doesn't need Karen. I don't think she even needs the sisters. Like we established earlier in the season... Oh, you in the sister circle now? No, I'm in the Fatima, the, you know, the Andy circle, me and Andy. So I think that, you know, Andy and Fatima, just those two alone would make for a better group of friends than Andy and the other three. But that's just my two cents. So like I said, ain't a damn thing to be proud of when it comes to Karen. That's all I got. Like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Catch you in the next one.